Hi, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Now, recently I did a review of this watch here. This is, uh, well, it looks like these other G-Shock Square watches, but this one's a little bit different because this is the model GWB5600, and like this one is the uh, GWM5610, and uh, there's some variations on that. Most of these watches right here are using the same module, and it has atomic time reception, and it has tough solar, and it's a nice, nice watch. This one's a little bit different because this, in addition to all the functions that are on these watches, has Bluetooth, so it's able to connect to a, a smartphone or a tablet, and uh, you know you can access some, some setup functions and uh, atomic time reception and stuff through the Bluetooth app with this one here. But some of the familiar things that you're used to on these other G-Shock squares are not as readily apparent on this one here. So one of the questions that somebody asked after I posted my review of this watch was, how do you tell the last time it was able to receive atomic time information that set itself using that multiband six? And it's something that's not apparent here, but you kind of have to dig into the diagnostic screens on this watch in order to find that. So let me just quickly illustrate how you find that information on this watch, which doesn't have Bluetooth. All you do from your regular timekeeping screen here is you push this button here on the lower right side, and this tells you the last time it was able to get its atomic time information. That happens to be uh, this morning, uh, just after midnight. So that's an easy way to know that's the last time it was able to synchronize itself. It's easy as that, but on this watch, doesn't have that. Just as with this watch here, if you want to know the state of the battery, uh, how well it's charged, there's an indicator right there for low, medium, and high. This is showing that the battery is well charged and you're doing okay. But on this watch over here, uh, doesn't have that. How do you know what the, what the state of the battery is on this watch? Well, let me answer both of those questions. First of all, as far as the battery is concerned, first of all, I'm going to connect this to the smart device by holding down this button on the lower left side, and that activates the uh, Bluetooth connection. And in just a moment, it's going to be connected here to my smartphone. And, um, okay. All right, so there I go to the home screen on the app, and here it's showing me the state of the battery up here in this corner. And so that's easy enough to see uh, the state of the battery charge is right there. But it'll never show you that on the watch itself, only on the app. And then as far as when is the last time it was able to uh, synchronize itself, well, what I can do is I can go up here to this thing that looks like a little gear, and if I tap on that and choose this watch as uh, the good timekeeper watch, okay, then it's got a screen with some of the things I can look at, and one of them says time adjustment, and if I, if I tap on that, it's actually going to show me down here on this screen uh, the last few times it was able to synchronize itself to atomic time through the app, through the Bluetooth connection. So typically it tries to do it about every six hours. So uh, about uh, it's about 12.30 a.m. and p.m. and about 6.30 a.m. and p.m. as well. It will try to connect. So I try to make sure that my, uh, my app is, uh, is, is ready, it's installed in the phone, and also I've turned on, I think this is necessary, but uh, I'll have to double check, I've turned on the location services on the app so that it's able to access my location even when I'm not using the app. I think that might be necessary in order for this to automatically keep kind of trying to check in with the uh, with the Bluetooth and the app. Uh, you know, every 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 six hours, I guess it is when it's trying to make that synchronization. So this is actually telling me that it was able to synchronize itself. Uh, well, that's just that's just today, uh, just after lunchtime today. So that's what it should do. And th you see, the, the Bluetooth synchronization takes precedence over the multiband six synchronization. So since it was able to do this with Bluetooth, it didn't even try to do it with the multiband six receiver. So I suppose if uh, I, I disabled the, uh, the app in such a way that this was not uh, connecting, to, to the Bluetooth uh, connection on a regular basis, then multiband six would kick back in and it would use multiband six to set itself. Or I could manually uh, do a multiband six reception on this. But if I just wanna know when was the last time it used multiband six to set itself, well then, here's what I have to do. Okay, I'm, first I'm gonna push this button to disconnect it from the app. 
Okay, so now I'm, I don't have the Bluetooth connection a, uh, active at the moment. What I need to do in order to check this out, I'm going to have to press this button right here that would normally um, get into some of the, the, the time synchronization functions, but uh, I'm going to push that and immediately while I'm still holding that, I'm going to push this button here and this button down here. And this actually gets you into some of the diagnostic screens on this watch. So watch what I do here. Oh, no, it didn't work. Okay. It's a little tricky to make sure you press all these buttons at the same time. So let me just cancel that and try again. Okay. There I did it. Okay. So now this is one of the diagnostic screens. And what this is telling me is that, um, well, this is information about the, the radio transmitter that it's trying to receive in order to uh, use that multiband six uh, function. And so this is one of the transmitters in Japan. And this one transmits data with a continuous 40 kilohertz carrier wave. That's what that 40 means. If I push this button here one more time, it's telling me that another one that comes from Japan is using a continuous 60 kilohertz carrier wave. This refers to WWVB in the United States with the, uh, again, a 60 kilohertz carrier wave. And as I, as I scroll the, through these, this is Germany, and, it, and it's referring to the different places where this would be trying to uh, receive its time information using the multiband six function. Now, if I push this button over here, that takes me right back to the, uh, you know, the regular timekeeping mode. So I'm going to have to get into this uh, one more time, uh, this this diagnostic. Okay, so and again, it's a little tricky to make sure I'm pressing these buttons in the correct sequence. Okay, there I go. Now, so instead of pushing this button here, what I needed to do is push this button here. And this also, if I scroll through here, is going to show me some other things that have to do with the uh, the receiver. And they don't make a lot of sense to me. Again, this is this is not in the manual. So I don't know exactly what all of these things refer to if I were to scroll through these. So instead of pushing that button there, from here, I'm going to push this button here one more time on the lower left. And right there, that is what you were looking for. That would be the thing that would be so easy to find on this other G-Shock right? Where there it says get and it shows you the last time it was able to receive. And here it's showing me the last time it tried to receive and was successful was way back. Uh, that's more than two months ago. And the reason it hasn't even I, I don't think it's even tried since then, is that it's been able to successfully connect through the app with Bluetooth often enough that it never had to then uh, revert to the multiband six reception as kind of a backup. So that's how it works with this particular watch. Uh, Multiband 6 is kind of the backup, and Bluetooth is the primary source of time data for this particular watch. But that is the way to get in and find out when is the last time you, you had Multiband 6 reception. So let me, let me just show you that one more time, okay? So from the regular timekeeping mode, it's a little bit tricky to try and press all these buttons at the same time, but let's try it. Okay, it might help if I push this button here just a little slightly before the other two, because that's the light button. And so if I push that, it's not going to try to change modes or do anything else. So push that one. And while I'm holding that one, push these other two very quickly. And then again, instead of scrolling through all this information, I'll press this button here on the lower left twice. And there, that's what, that's what the, the, the question was. How do you get to this information? And there it is. So maybe what I'll try is I'll try turning off the Bluetooth uh, and maybe configure the app so that it's it's not uh, it's not accessing my my location you know constantly even when I'm not using the app and see if that changes its ability to automatically check in with the app because otherwise you know if I don't wear this watch I leave it home and I go somewhere and take my phone then uh, it's going to be out of range to do a Bluetooth connection automatically you know at 6:30 or 12:30. So, you know, I'll just maybe, maybe I'll just kind of stick this in the other side of the house for a few days and see what happens if it's if it's far enough away from the phone that it's not doing the Bluetooth synchronization and see if that multiband six will uh, will automatically revert to, you know, as, as the backup way to set itself. Well, that's what it's supposed to do. But I just haven't tested that out to make sure it really would do that. OK, there are some other you know diagnostic screens that you that you would access the same way, pressing three buttons at a time. For example, if I press, let's see. If I press these three buttons and, and skip this one here, okay, 
that's my solar cell test. And this is, this is a diagnostic test that's available on some other G-Shock watches as well. This is uh, going to tell me that the solar cell is, 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 is responding as it should. Right now, I'm in the light. So what I do is I just kind of cover this up so that it's, it's not receiving light when it comes back. There are those digits there uh, indicating that, yes, something changed with the, with the solar uh, reception, I guess you would, you know, the, with the light that was coming in. That's your solar test right there. Uh, and if I push that there now, this goes to a tilt test because, as you may know, uh, you can set this so that uh, the, the backlight comes on automatically when you tilt the watch towards yourself. And so this is just testing that the little mechanical unit that's inside of here that senses that movement is working correctly. So as I tilt it up towards as though I'm looking at it, that's showing me that, yes, that, that is when it would turn on the light when I tilt it that way. So that, that worked right. And then, uh, so yeah, it just kind of goes back and forth between the tilt and the solar test if I do that. Let's see if I push that one there. Okay, now I'm back to normal timekeeping mode. Uh, let's see, the next test would be, let me, let me just show it what it really is is these three buttons and not pushing the light button. So if I do that right now, this gives me my LCD panel test. So uh, here, many of the segments of the LCD are visible. If I push this button down here now, it scrolls to some of some different segments. It's showing me different patterns. If I push this again, now it's showing me every every segment of the LCD that, that could be visible is now visible. So I can look at that and say, all right, I think my panel's okay, the LCD screen here, because every segment looks like it's working correctly. I'll push this again, and there it says 3461. And some watches, uh, when you do this test, it's showing you the module number, on others it's not. Again, this is not in the manual, so I'm not sure what all of these things refer to. ROM, does that refer to some of the programming that's built into the watch? See, and file, I don't know, firmware notices, I, I really don't know what those all mean. You know, DST, so something, whatever that refers to. Uh, yeah, so again, diagnostic screens that are not mentioned in the owner's manual, and I'm not exactly sure what they all mean, but that's how you, how you reach them. And the only thing that really enhances the user experience is knowing how to get to this diagnostic screen. Uh, where am I? Come on. This one that again shows you your reception uh, from multiband six. All right, I hope that made sense. I hope that was useful information. Again, there's a little bit more than meets the eye when it comes to this uh, G-Shock Square with Bluetooth. I, I've really enjoyed this watch. I've had it for a couple of months, uh, almost three months now. It's been a really nice one. You know, I, li I like to wear them all. So it's kind of, I, I regret that I only have two wrists. I can only wear two watches at a time because I, I love to rotate through all of these. All right, well, thanks again for watching The Good Timekeeping Show, and I'll be back again soon with yet another new episode.